Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. And we're back for the championship final game on the uh, men's side here. My name is Ryan Parent, and I'll be providing broadcast coverage this game. And we're also going to have Mark No joining us at some point soon here. So, for the players this game, we have on Team Dropkin, uh, Skip Dry Corey Dropkin, who's throwing lead stones. Andrew Stepera is throwing last rocks. Mark Fenner throwing second, and Thomas Howell throwing third. And for Team Casper, out of Chaska, Minnesota, we have Daniel Casper, Luke Violet, Ben Richardson and Chase Sinnott. And both of these teams are at 5 0 so far this event. Team Dropkin throwing a draw around here. They're going to try to get it half buried and cover some of their rock that's in the top four. Sweepers are going hard to try to get a buy and it'll come up just short, but it does guard their rock. So now, Team Casper is looking at the angle run. Other option is to peel off the red one in the center and maybe they spill in some of their yellows.
And also being streamed uh, at the moment is the uh, women's final. We have Delaney Strauss versus taking on Sung Yeon Ha. And the men's fifth place game, which is going to be Ethan Sampson versus Jed Brundage. And Team Casper opts to peel off this red one in the middle. See what happens with these yellows. Oh, they make the double. None of their yellows spill in, but that's a really good shot. Now Team Dropkin will have a draw round behind some guards that are overlapped with each other. Looks like Mark's going to be joining us here in just a minute. Red one was left open, so Team Cash will try to hit and roll, get behind the corner. Rolls part of the way. It's open shot, though, so we'll have a chance here to roll back under the center guards. Are you there, Mark? I am. Welcome. Thanks. Are we? Did you get that uh, flat tire fixed? No, it's a little bit into the sidewall, and of Ooh. course, uh, uh, the store doesn't have the tire. So, and they don't actually. I don't know how this works. Doesn't it? But they uh, they won't do singles on all-wheel drive vehicles, so hmm. got to get some other stuff figured out. And because I've got curling later today, so I'd like to have it. So ended up dropping off at a different shop. They said they might be able to get to it, so we'll see. That's good. At least you're here now to yeah. cast the game. Uh, it just doesn't quite get the hit and roll on that one, so that'll be Team Dropkins chance to roll underneath sorry i take it we're live yeah we are live yes oh, perfect sorry <laughs> if i asked you about your tire made it seem like we weren't live but yeah i'm <laughs> so sure so <clears throat> yeah looking forward to this matchup here should be good you know uh, yeah both teams are at five and oh so someone's gonna have to lose their winning streak now yeah I haven't had a chance to see much of Team Casper over the years, but I think it's just, you know, they've, I've always kind of known them as one of those, you know, top teams coming kind of out of the East Coast of the U.S. And then, you know, then mm -hmm. you've got Dropkick, who's been kind of designated as the heir apparent to U.S. curling, after, you know, after Schuster. But, so yeah, it should be a really good matchup here. Shots looking good. Uh, it does roll, a roll a bit far, but rolling open. So 
I see we still have, uh, I guess, Stapera throwing last rocks here. Yeah, Casper one hammer. Do you think they're going to try to roll under the center here or just nose it? I mean, yeah, I think they'll they'll probably play a little conservatively. I mean, I think they'd love to get a roll here, but you know, I think it's just more important to make contact here. So, you know, first they don't want to get too squirrely out here. Yeah, rolling under the center could leave a freeze. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess you wouldn't mind it, right? Like, you know, to give you a chance to. Ooh, that's pretty that's, good. Yeah, but doesn't this just leave the hit and roll for. Yeah, for maybe. Yeah. Maybe if they got just a little bit more roll, it would have been ideal, but at least it's yeah. not completely wide open now. I mean, they can see the entire rock, but uh, yeah. there is a chance that they brick on that center one. And <laughs> that'd be quite bad if they bump one of those yellows in. Oh, yeah. So they're not, they got to be a little bit careful here, but there is a chance to roll underneath. Yep. Get a force. But after seeing some of the shots that Andrews made earlier today, you got to think it's pretty routine for him. Yeah. He made a, quite a few nice shots last game. Yeah. See, we've got Megan. Good morning, Megan. Didn't see you for the early draws. Just <laughs> I know you've been uh, watching some of the draws a couple weeks ago in the Duke, so good to see you this morning. And they get to nose on that. So yep. it'll be a shot to blank here for Team Casper. And that's looking pretty good. Nice shot. Concludes the first end uh, with a blink. And tie game heading into two. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. We're back for the second end of this men's final. 
And if you're waiting on the uh, other two games, they will be up up shortly. Center guard to start off for Team Drocken. Well placed. Just a bit short there, but will be usable if he goes underneath. We got expect to move to, to draw underneath here. Yep. It's always good to miss light if you have hammer drawn around the center. Back four is not great. Cuts out, down a lot of the scoring zone after a freeze is made. But if you come up light and just short of the house, that's yep. Perfectly usable in most cases. Mark and I are going a little bit late here. It's so trying to tuck a piece behind. And it gets a bone half buried. Yeah. And it is behind T, though, so. It is, so yeah, Team Casper's going to call a freeze here. It's down, going hard. It's looking really good. good shot. Almost into the back of the house. Yeah, pretty good. Now, ideally, would you have liked it not to bump it as far or to you know, leave some, some jam possibilities? or? I, I think it's okay to to move it that far. Like, is both work, I think. Yeah. Like the good thing about moving this back is opens up scoring zone more. You know, take your rock the opponent's rocks out of the center of the house is always good. But if they're freezing, then that's also good because uh, it'll be difficult to take their their rock out. So this one uh, does roll a little bit more open so team casper is going to try to hit and roll underneath yeah set up pretty decently here and if they're wide they can get the nose double too yep just got to be careful about not cr crashing on theirs back there but imagine with this kind of weight they'll be able to control it pretty nicely going hard for line a little early backing off now Really nice shot there. Yeah, well played. Rolls under. It's mostly buried now, so yeah, Dropin's gonna do the run back. After the run. Looks like he called to nose the red one, so they're not gonna try the run double. They're just gonna try to keep keep a center, yeah. Keep a center and keep uh, a rock buried. I don't think there's run too much weight either. Just a nice normal weight. It's over curls and just peels off the guard. So I think I noticed this in the other game, but didn't make a comment on it is so with Corey throwing lead rocks, they're keeping Mark Fenner throwing second. And I think Thomas Howell's throwing vice rocks here. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So I don't think I don't see that too often, right? Where 
you're switching up a lineup and then have your lead throwing third rocks there. Yeah, usually uh, your lead's going to be the most consistent drawer. And oftentimes, I mean, of course, every position's got to be good at making every type of shot. But oftentimes the third is throwing a lot more hits, especially yeah. upweed hits. So it's interesting that they have their uh, lead throwing third, but it seems to be working out for them. Yeah, I mean, can't argue with the results in, in pool play going undefeated here. Nice guard there, so I have to play another run back. Yeah, a little less comfortable you're, you're running back the, the yellows here, but probably trying to spill two, yeah. The head to head matchup on these two teams Dropkin uh, has two wins, Casper zero. So, I think Casper's going to be looking for their first win against Corey Dropkin. Yeah, I think this is a somewhat. I, I don't know much about Team Casper here. So, if anyone in the chat wants to chime, but I want to say I recognize quite a few of their names. Um, but from, from various teams, I think this may be kind of one of the first seasons with this particular night with, with Casper and, uh, yeah, and, and company. Yeah. Makes the guard. Pretty good. Just overgirls maybe just a hair to make this run double a little bit easier. But still have to make it. So run back attempt number two for Thomas Howell. And you're just keeping a broom down, keeping it clean. Yep, makes it just nicely and keeps a guard up there. So very nice well. Shot. And uh, now Team Cash will draw around again. That's the yeah. uh, issue when you're running back to your opponent's stones. Is you make it, but you can't stick either of the rocks around, obviously, because it's your opponent's stones. So they get to draw around again, and then you have to make another run back a lot of the times. But the second time, you get to run back your own stone and try to stick it. Yeah. Now, do you like this call, or do you ever like just hitting that red and rolling and you know covering the other side? Uh, let's take a look at the house again once this rock comes down. You just, oh, you mean like, uh, like you hit the off. red and yeah, just hit the red and like roll to center, maybe. I mean, you, you kind of risk jamming on the back back there, but you got to figure, even if that shot's kind of made, you know, the core's either coming down to it or taking another run you know but this time running red back i think i think i like the draw probably at least make them make the run back but he does go deep on this one so yeah now there's gonna be a freeze Sweepers on this pretty early, backing off just a little bit. Can't quite hear what they're saying, but looks to be pretty good communication from the front end there. Just a hair wider than they probably wanted, but settles in there for 
shot rock from yep. the outside. Just good enough to make that rock irremovable on that intern side. Yeah. Casper does have an option of running their uh, yellow in, but they're going to start with a draw and possibly take that run back on their second shot. You always like to look at and see the front end communicating with you. Like I said, I couldn't hear what you know Mark was saying, but he seemed to be talking the way down with the rock. So it's good on the front end to make sure they're communicating mm -hmm. line and weight calls. And it's much easier to communicate now that uh, we're down to the final game. There's only three games on the ice, so much quieter in the curling club. Yeah. Do you like do you like curling when it's when it's your own, one of the few games out on this year? I think it's weird. It, it can be a little bit weird. It's it, like it's way easier to communicate, but you get so used to constant noise that when it's all completely quiet, you're the only one throwing a rock. You, yeah, it's almost distracting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like when it's silent and you have a draw you know, against three, you know. Yeah, and or I know if there's, if there's only like one other game going. Yeah. And they're mostly quiet, and then all of a sudden they're yelling like crazy, and you get startled. But go ahead. What were we going to Oh, I was going to say, yeah, like, you know, it's when it's quiet, you're drawn against three. But I think I was talking to someone else on commentary, maybe Sean, and he's telling me it's not against like, a draw against three. It's, it's just a draw to the forefoot. That's all it is, you know? <laughs> Little piece of, I guess, sports psychology there. Yeah. So, looks like Casper does make the good freeze back on top. So, still behind T. So, still there's still a good amount of space there to to get to the inside here. Although, I, I guess it's maybe not as curling as hard at the end there. So, gonna have to, it's still a little tricky to get get to a good spot here. Yeah, I think they'll try to get maybe just on the inside of that yellow one or pretty close to the nose of it would be ideal. Yeah, probably right on the nose would be best. Yeah. Kind of back and forth with the sweeping here. Good sign. Clear cigar with no problem and does get to the inside. That's a really wonderful shot. Is good. Um, so the question is, if they try to hit as much as they can of that red, does it looks like they probably only get one if they did that. I don't think the red's going to catch very much of the yellow. It no, yeah, the I other can... red. Yeah, it just seems like yeah, you might the spill water. the yellow to the side, but yeah, I think it just, it, it it spins off that back red one and sticks yeah. around somewhere. Yeah, I think the back red one probably stays around for shots, so probably don't want to catch the yellow at all. Otherwise, you might give up a steal. Yeah. So just pick it clean off the top. Now, for shots like this where you're you're trying to pick it off clean, does it does it really matter what turn here? If you're, I assume they're going to be throwing pretty pretty firm here. Yeah, I think most teams would just automatically play the intern. Um, you could play the outturn if you had a little bit more of it, but I think with how much you can see, the outturn will curl away a bit, and you'd have to get really close to the top guard to make that. That was pretty hard to. Oh, makes it really nicely there. Yeah, and it touched the yellow, but still shot. So makes a nice shot to get one there. Yeah, well played.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. And we are back. Team Casper taking a single point in the previous end there. It was a nice little pick. So Team Corey Dropkin with Hammer here. After center guards thrown up, it looked to go ahead and bring it inside and end up being just on lid, maybe just a little bit back button. But. And we do have the other two games up and running now, if you prefer to check out the women's final. Yeah, I imagine that would be a good game, too. And the uh, Haas scored, took a steal of a one in the first end in that game. So looking to lock one just right on top of the one that's on back button. So as I'm watching that, uh, the last shot being swept in, I can see he's kind of using that uh, kind of new, I guess I'll say knifing technique that I've seen kind of recently. Yeah. Have you guys, have you guys started using that? Um, We've talked about it. Yeah. I've recommended it to, uh, my teammates, but I don't think they've, uh, I don't think my sweepers have caught on too much to doing it too hard. I would like to do like a little bit more analysis, kind of testing sure. it out, see if we can notice a difference, but it's getting more and more popular. So yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's a reason for that. We're seeing Mark do it here as well. I, I, I know I, Caught my, I remember it. I think in the second game of my spiel a couple weeks ago in Denver, I tried doing it. I I'm like the worst person to give feedback on it, you know, because I haven't played front end in years. But I mean, I guess it looks like I know what I'm doing, but could easily fool someone who's more knowledgeable in curling. Yeah, I think a more important technique for trying to get a rock to curl is to really lean on the brooms as hard as you can and push yeah. hard. But don't sweep too fast. Sure. Because it's all about creating scratches in the ice, right? So you wanna mm -hmm. you wanna get as deep as scratches as possible without heating up and melting the ice, which would have the opposite effect of keeping it straight. Yeah. So I I think that's the uh, I think that's more important than the angle in which you're have your broom head, in my opinion. But yeah. No, yeah, I would agree with that for sure. So Got a lot of rocks in play. I always like seeing it's like this kind of shape out where got a lot of rocks in play and maybe one guard that has a lot of responsibilities right now. Yeah, it's a battle of little bumps here and there trying to get the right angles. Are they trying to poke this one through the hole and just kind of roll to the wings here? It looks like it, yeah. Oh, 
just clears the guard. See if they clear the other one, that's top Oof. eight. Just don't, and uh, kind of taps it yeah. dead frozen on that side red one. So Yeah, I think the curl may be kind of surprised the, there, because we've seen a lot of teams where a lot of rocks have been kind of maybe running a little bit straight this uh, during the U.S. Open here, but so maybe that's just a spotter. Yeah, wow. getting a little bit more curl this game, maybe. I have to go hard to make sure this is across and now finish it. See if we can tuck it behind that center. Yeah, another center guard here is pretty yeah. good. I think they would have liked a little bit more separation, but... Oh. Trying to play the same shot again? Yeah. Are you surprised they're not taking on the guard since they're pretty close? I mean, I guess there's um, a, enough room where it's successful, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. I... I think I'd probably call this shot again. Yeah, I mean, I guess you just threw it. You moved that guard over, so you, you've actually got. So even though the center's still there, yeah, it's just not an easy double peel. You, you kind of have to just nose it, and just, that's gonna leave a guard up. Yeah, and then go. I give the up slash it the other way. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, like if you slash it over the top, you, it's pr probably only bad things are gonna happen. So yeah. Yeah, it's, that's always a famous thing to kind of it's just like, oh, what's the worst going to happen here, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, second attempt with this little quiet, quiet wait, poke through the hole here. Sweepers are a little bit less interested. Now going on the curl side here. Seeing a little bit of that knifing technique on the... Outside edge, yep. And it's made. Caught it a little thin. I didn't think they wanted it to <clears throat> call it a little thin, so I ended up rolling out, but. Yeah, they would have liked to stick around. Yeah. So. I think even if they stuck around, right, that, that Casper is still going and essentially putting it back, right? Yeah, it's pretty safe for Casper to put another one in regardless just because they have that other yellow that's so solidly placed. Like, yeah. It's pretty much impossible to remove at the moment. Yeah, and I think that's that, I think that was like my consideration for, for ripping the guards there, right? Because even if, you, even if you make the shot, right, and you roll, say, side of eight foot with your hit, if your team drop in, Casper's just Run another one in there, you know. Yeah. Maybe they could have played a corner freeze. But yeah. yeah. I think just the way the rocks are set up, like Team Casper has much better placement. And a hair light, so. Okay. Getting a little crowded here. Now we've got a couple options here for Corey. I guess you could always swing one underneath. And go to top four as he just indicated, or come the other way, or maybe even chip at yellow a little bit and flop inside, unlock that back red one a little bit. Yeah, I like that shot. I was also thinking just throw a guard on the left side in front of that yellow, and it'd be pretty hard for Casper uh, to get another shot in. Yeah. They would have the out turn freeze, but it's not easy. But yeah, I like I like what you said. Uh, just come and try to get to the inside of that. Yeah, what he's calling yeah. right now. Just bump it a foot or two. And yeah, I think the key here is that, that angle. key here is Dropkins are already sitting too, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we kind of had it. The end just kind of really flipped there where, you know, if Casper goes, you know, top four, right? Then Corey's got to look at doing something else here. But now, with that shot right there, he's got some options. Yeah, if uh, that yellow top 12 gets shot, 
just touch and top button and they'd probably just play a double peel. It looks like they might play a double peel anyways. Okay. Really? Huh. But, you know, that may just be preference to kind of keep it open, so. Yeah, a couple of nice hits here and could still keep a blank alive. Yeah. Nice shot. Yeah. That's a triple. Well done. Well done by Thomas Alex getting a chance to play more more hits this weekend. Because I think even because I think he's been kind of lead for this team for a while and then before the team drop game when he was with McCormick, I think he was lead on that team as well. Hmm. I think they're wasting his uh, hitting talent, putting him at lead. Yeah. He, that was a great shot. So it looks like they're just going to hit this red one in the back four foot. Yeah. Maybe try to get a little bit roll to the inside. Trying quite a bit here. It's Maybe I'll roll out. Oh, sticks around for for third, but it's a waiting game to see who's gonna make a play on those uh, on the frozen <laughs> rock first. Yeah, <laughs> who's gonna flinch first? No problem hitting stick there. Nice shot. Yeah. I think we'll see Casper go ahead and make a play on these here. It's just talking about where they can kind of roll to. Yeah, I try to leave it in a spot where there's... There's no doubles, yeah. No double, and they're sitting two. Are they? Because I think they want to roll to the other side of the house to make that happen, but I don't know if that's what they called. Is it? I, I don't think that's. Yeah, I think they're actually kind of rolling, kind of keeping it in front of the one that's kind of in the back eight, hmm. which is going to leave them. I mean, it leaves a double, but it's hard to. You, you don't stick the shooter, right? Like it, it, it's because you have to slash it. Yeah, it depends exactly how far they roll. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, they came to that shot pretty quickly, so I think they feel, you know, pretty conf. They're pretty comfortable with the shot call of it. Yeah. Lots to consider here. My contact and rolls. Uh, rolls to third rush, third shot here. This is maybe a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's. Yeah, if they keep it a little bit shorter, it makes it double easier. But now yeah, maybe they're thinking uh, to roll to the left side. They figure they'll leave a double, but then there'll be a double right back, most likely for them. Yeah. Might have been what they were thinking about. But now, Team Dropkin can just roll to the center line, and it's going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be hard double yeah. pretty thin. Yeah, I don't think they... Yeah, that was going to be kind of tough either way. But, you know, really interesting in, in terms of rock placement, you know. Um, you know, we had a bunch of guards in place, you know, a bunch of stuff around the forefoot, and uh, Thomas Howell makes a heck of a 
appeal triple. Yeah. Completely changed the dynamics of the sand, eh? Yeah. But yeah, props to Dropkin to kind of seeing this and materializing the end, right? You know, I think I I saw a different deuce in my mind, but this one shaping out to be completely different. Oh. Jumped a little bit on the end there, but just got it by. Yeah, just got it by. So not an easy yeah. double. Probably just rolled. Yeah. yeah. Looks like they're calling the roll. I think I'd probably try the double though. It's so tough to roll into a spot where you're not leaving a shot for two. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the question is what's harder here, the double or the roll? Yeah, like, the issue is that other yellow one, they they might be able to come in off of it or slash it or something and have a shot for two, even if they roll pretty well. A shot now for Daniel Casper. Gonna make good contact here. Let's see how far it rolls. Rolls to shot. Yeah, it's a pretty good roll, but you can see they can. Just hit that one as yeah. thin as possible on the outside, and they'll just roll right into the side of the yellow. And yeah, shoot. yeah, basically just yeah, just in the pocket there. But you, you kind of have to hit the one on the left hand side first, yeah. Uh, I think I, you I, could I, catch the outside one first. Oh, I, as well. I think either yeah. way you can make it. Yeah, because it because it spins off into that. Yeah, that's actually probably the preferred way. So yeah, I was I was worried about because like they made that. Roll. Per, I assume that's pretty much exactly where they wanted to go to, but there's still a pretty easy shot for two. So yeah, I think they maybe should have taken on that double. Yeah. Corey's got to make this first, or not Corey? Yeah, uh, Andrew. Andrew. So quick update in the other uh, final match. Looks like uh, uh, Strauss took a single. So they are now tied up 1-1 one, one, uh, with Team Hawk going into the third. Sweeper's on it pretty hard. Yep, no problem. Makes it for two. Nice end by Team Dropkin to score their deuce. Puts them up 2-1, heading into the fourth end. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Mm -hmm. 
We're back. Fourth end in this final men's final. Uh, center guard goes up. Seems like these center guards are being made very well. Every single time, it's pushing the center line. Nice tight guard. Yeah, yeah. And some of the other games I've seen have been off center by a little bit here, but uh, both teams, you know, coming into this five and zero, pretty locked in in this event here. A little bit of a slip there. These are high caliber teams. Team Casper is currently ranked 71 on the World Curling Tour. And Dropkin is currently ranked 19th, just after Mike McEwen. Oh. Dropkin is the highest ranked uh, American team in the world, or in America, I guess, and in the world, but just uh, three spots ahead of John Schuster currently. They've uh, gotten already gotten 51 points for this year, so they've had a good start to their year. With a second place finish in the Euro Super Series and a fifth place in the Baden Masters. Yeah, it still feels pretty early in the season, but you know these guys have quite a few events already already done here. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, like I said, it's it's still early in the season, but I feel like I've watched a lot more curling, you know, at this point of the year than I have in years past, right? And I think that's just great to have all this access to curling, um, you know, especially through curling zone and curling stadium to, to watch all these games. Right. I know it's a relatively small team, but for them to be able to, you know, put this game on the other, the women's final game on the consolation game, like being able to see all the sheets and not just, you know, the feature games, I think has been, been pretty neat here. Yeah. And we're also covering uh, the, Mixed doubles up in Leduc. Oh, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, there'll be uh, more events in Leduc to cover, uh, right? Uh, is there going to be one in a couple weeks? Uh, yeah, there's a Leduc men's and uh, Leduc women's event next week I'll be competing in. Nice. So we'll get to see you. And, and I think Lisa's going to be in that one too, right? Uh, Lisa's not, I believe. Oh, no? Okay. No, they're going to Vernon. Yeah. I think that's next weekend. So, yeah, they'll, they'll be in Vernon. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think we're trying to get some some uh, broadcasting set up out there, too. So you can look forward to that next weekend as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so if uh, if you guys aren't happy with Ryan's commentary for some reason, you can watch his games and and cheer against him. Well, it's not very nice. <laughs> We're doing the best we can here, guys. Uh, we got Elizabeth checking in, in the chat here. Uh, why is Andrew shooting Last Rocks? Uh, when do they change the order? You know, Elizabeth, I don't know. So if anyone else in the chat knows why Andrew's throwing Last Rocks, I, I, I know it's just been this, from what it sounds like, it's been this way all weekend where they kind of switched up the order so uh andrew's throwing last rocks and actually their lead tom is throwing uh third rocks with Corey throwing lead rocks so I, i'm not sure the reason for that change um i mean it's, it's obviously worked out very well for them i mean i think they're all capable shooters and there's a decent chance they'd be in the final you know with their normal throwing order but yeah i'm just very curious to to know why the change so if anyone knows feel free to chime in the chat Yeah, I'm not sure if they uh, were playing like this in the other events as well. Yeah, if they were, I'm surprised they would switch it up now because they play so well in their other events so far this season. Yeah, I, I don't think they did. I was pretty sure Corey's throwing Skip Rocks in the other events, though. So it leads me to think there's maybe just like a little 
a little bit of an injury or something or a little, you know, hitch or something. Hopefully it's nothing bad, you know. Yeah, or they're just testing it out. Probably for this team, slightly more relaxing event, less uh less travel, less less um serious event for them. Still yeah. a still a clearly a high level event, but yeah, compared to Bait and Masters, for example. Oh uh, sure, yeah. Still still you know, points on the points on the line here, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, but I probably need to just kind of look around on curling zone to see, you know, more about the rankings, more about the points. They've got a lot of stuff up there. So this end appears to be just a bit more straightforward. Not a lot of guards in place. So just kind of exchanging hits. And it looks like we did get some mention in the chat that Corey is just nursing an injury. So, ah, uh, yeah, that answers it then, eh? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So it's an injury. Still, you know, managing the house and managing it very well. Calling, calling a great game for his team. And he's throwing, still throwing really well. He's oh, yeah. Great. And let's see if this sticks around. Yep. Looks it like does. it is going to be just annoying enough to hang around here. I mean, you kind of have to play at this, right? Even though it's just way out there, there's no real great reason to try to sink one around here. Yeah, just uh, keep it simple. And a blank for Team Casper's, or uh, yeah, Casper's Hammer, yeah. They'll take a blank this end. And maybe try to blank again next end. That one's not on, but possibly, yeah, it's splittable, yeah. Yeah, it's really tricky with uh, when the rocks are that wide, because the house is just curving away from you, but it's so close, I'm thinking I might be able to split yeah, it in, but... Like even a freeze top, yeah, but see a little small in the corner space, and after looking at that rock, and I think they're just going to look to go underneath their center now. Yeah, as long as they don't miss the house on uh, on these last two shots, they won't have Captain Casper won't have the chance to try the split. So this is a good opportunity to draw around and make Daniel play a tougher shot. Draws looking pretty nice. Yep. Well managed, and that is pretty dead buried. Yeah, I probably have to make a run back now. Yeah. But they're going to leave their shooter around, so Coriel or Team Dropkin will be able to draw around again. Yep. This is made. So Ryan, I was noticing, you know, at this event compared to say Leduc, uh, I see more hats being worn here uh, at the U.S. Open. Is that 
not not really much of a Canadian thing. Do you see much hats being worn during spiels? There's, yeah, there's a good amount of players that wear hats. Not too many, but that's kind of interesting. Seeing the different, you know, things that people are wearing, you know, you know, hats and headbands. Headbands, watches are kind of a thing for a little bit for some some guys. I don't like curling with a watch, like a wristwatch on. No, uh, yeah, I feel like yeah, when you grip the broom and you're sweeping, it can sometimes dig into your wrist a little bit, dig into the back of your hand. Yeah. Just a little bit annoying. So I peel off the uh, center guard. Dropping is going to put uh, split the rings. It could also throw a another guard up. Yeah. Better chance to steal if they throw a guard up. There's yeah, nothing wrong that's with kind the of shot. what I was wondering, right? Because I mean, you, you if you, you know, actually, I think I prefer the guard here, but yeah, it's not I, always... I agree with that. I guess it is hard to throw in a perfect guard though, and this is probably easier and. Get you the get you the force you're looking for. Yeah, as long as you get in the rings, you're gonna get the force here. So with the guard you have to be pretty accurate on the line call to so that they don't have a piece and try to blank. Yeah, it's a pretty good spot though. It's yep. not the easiest sink do uh shot for one ever. Looks like they're just gonna hit the back one, roll a little bit to the left, try yep. to get full four. So, last of Skips or Ox for Team Casper. <laughs> On it pretty early. Appears to be holding up just nicely. Yep. Good sweep. So Team Casper. Oh, I guess they're going to take a look at it. I just assume oh, they kicked off. So we're just going to go with Team Casper getting their single. So now we are tied up uh, two to two. And we'll be back after this break. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Welcome back to the Curve U.S. Open of Curling here in Blaine, Minnesota. We're sitting at 2-2, tie game in the fifth end. Dropkin has hammer after getting that force in the last end there. 
Uh, on the women's side, score is 1-1 one, one in the fourth end. So a couple close games here. Yeah, a couple of close games for some good teams in the finals. And <clears throat> for those that are interested in that women's finals, it is being broadcast. Um, so you can always just go to the curling zone, uh, just, you know, find curling zone online, either go to the website, there'll be a little button next to the scores for a link to their YouTube, or you can just go to YouTube directly and find curling zone. You can subscribe and be notified of all the broadcasts as, and when they come online. So I think something to kind of interesting is that, um, because it's, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to broadcast multiple games at once. You know, not all the games come on at the same time. So um, so in case you're wondering, you know, why isn't this on? It's just, it, it takes time to get these games up. So, but if you're subscribed to me, you'll be notified when the games do come online. So, so that may be uh, a good way to see. Is, uh, I mean, right now, heck, they're, they're doing what, I mean, it's the finals, but we're still got three games here, right? We got two final games, one consolation game. We've got the mixed doubles uh, in Alberta. So uh, a lot going on this weekend. Yeah, hats off to our production team for doing all this work. It's a lot of work getting these streams going. It's easy for us. We just have to watch and talk. Oh, yeah. And keep track of the rocks, which I'm not doing so far. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and, you know, if anyone in the chat, is there, if there's anything you'd like to see, please let us know. Yeah. Uh, we welcome any sort of feedback, so feel free to, uh, I'm kind of monitoring the YouTube chat. Uh, I'll try to keep an eye on Facebook chat, but yeah, feel free to let us know if there's stuff you'd like to see. Double centers followed up and two draws in the house. That second draw doesn't quite bury as much as they're hoping for, so it's going to be a possible double, or maybe they yeah. just hit the one out. Yeah, they had to go pretty hard to knife that one in there. It looks like Team Ha from Korea just got a three ender in the third wow. there, putting them up 4 1. It's interesting. I can see on, you know, curling zone. You know, I, I've, you know, being uh, out of the United States here, I'm, I'm, I'm a little familiar with uh, Team Strauss. Not as familiar with Team Ha, but I can quickly go to curling zone and see that they actually have, have no head-to-head. -head, so this is the kind of the first matchup between those two, uh, two teams. Interesting. Nice double peel. Yeah. And the other shot just goes harmlessly onto the empty sheet next door. I think I was talking to Lisa about that earlier. So do you guys, she was wondering if uh, we had a lot of like, like sideboards and barriers there in the States and told her it's, it, at least in my experience, that's not too common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also talked to Lisa about that. Up in Alberta, we have sideboards, at least like after the hog lines, on pretty much every single club. I think oh, wow. every single club that I'm aware of in Alberta has sideboards. But uh, in, in other places in Canada, in BC and out east as well, they uh, they do it much more like these clubs without sideboards sometimes. Yeah saves a little bit of space so you can have wider sheets with a uh, smaller area and okay. uh, it's also a little bit easier for the ice makers but then the teams have to worry of course about rocks flying off the sides and oh, yeah. hitting other sheets i didn't quite see what happened on the last rock must have been a little bit of a miss i think they were trying casper is trying to get that red rock out and then even Corey now 
or team drop game with a simple no set now. Yeah, no set and those rocks are dead even. No double at the moment. So if you're uh, Team Casper here and you're trying to generate a double, what what how how do you how do you accomplish that? So you could either try to roll closer to the red one, or you can nose. If you nose it and uh, Team Drop noses it back, then you'll have a double available. Yeah. But if you nose it, then Team Drop can can try to roll to the other side of the rings a bit. Yeah. And it did roll a little bit wide, which makes this shot a bit easier to. Just roll it a foot or two to the right, and those rocks will be not quite dead even, but far enough away that there won't be a double. Yeah. So that essentially that was just the way you couldn't make it, right? Yeah. Yeah. If anything, you wanted to go be inside, rolling closer. Yeah. So hitting machine, Thomas Hell, get another chance to make a hit. And actually, rolls well, closer to, yeah. Doesn't quite get out of that corner, but I don't think that's the intent, you know? As long as it's yeah, in play. a little bit risky to try to tuck a piece under there. Very easy to just slightly misjudge and roll out of the house. I decide to hit the uh, center, center rock instead here. Yeah, I think they're just going to give up, make a hit, hope, drop in, hits and rolls out, and then maybe try to go free, frozen to that one, I guess. And roll over a bit. Team drop and is going to attempt to roll right back to where it was and keep these rocks separated. Yeah, it, it's tough to score two like this with uh, uh, Team Drop. And you have to make every shot pretty much, especially if you get the situation early in the end. You got to make like six shots or so yeah. in a row in fairly precise rolls. But if you do make all your shots, then there's just nothing that the other team can do about it. They just have to hope for a miss, really. Another good shot. Sometimes they, they'll. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, are they are they trying to just roll big here? Yeah, I was just gonna say, like sometimes you'll see teams try to throw peel weight and get a really long flat roll. Yeah. Try to bring a double into play. Uh, looks like they might just be. Uh, I'm not sure what they're trying. We'll see. Yes. Maybe just a little bit of roll toward the center. Maybe. Save it here, I guess. Does get a roll towards center. Oh. Yeah, no hit and uh, it won't be a double. Are you surprised they didn't take a, a, a chance at a bigger roll there, you know? I think they might have been trying to. They were cutting it the whole way, or most of the way on that shot. Yeah. Just didn't quite get it right. Yeah, I think Lisa was, when I was doing a commentary with her, she was asking me kind of, <clears throat> what what was my weight preference on some of these sent rolls? And I said, you know, for the, those big rolls, I do kind of prefer that firmer weight. Yeah. 
Yeah, usually, I mean, it's a lot of complexities behind a hidden role for the weight choice you want to take. I talked about it yesterday a bit. Um, first of all, like how how shallow or like how flat versus how steep you want to roll, the harder you throw it, the flatter the roll is going to be, yeah. obviously. Um, and then the harder you throw it, though, the... Uh, more precise you have to be for where you hit the rock uh like for example if you throw an eight second hit and you want to roll it well if you hit have an eight second hit and you had half a rock you're going to roll out for sure yeah but if you have like a board weight hit half a rock still staying in the house so you could hit a larger area of the rock and, and still make your shot with less weight Trying to knife it at the end here, and just rolls to the center line. So pretty routine hit and stay for <clears throat> second deuce for potential second deuce here for Team Dropkin. And the other thing to consider with how much weight you throw is. How lively the rocks are in the houses, and oh, sure. how much it's curling. Um, with less weight, you can control the rock a lot better, but you have to be a bit more precise on how much weight you throw. Because if you throw like a half second different than what you called when you call board weight, it's gonna curl a lot more than say if you try to throw a nine second hit and you threw nine five. The difference in curl with that weight wouldn't be quite as significant and makes a shot for two puts uh dropkin up four to two after four i uh, will see you after the break Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. And we are back. Team Corey Dropkin getting their deuces last in, so Team Casper will be looking to answer two of their own here. Keep bringing to you the sixth end of the men's final of the Curve US Open of Curling Championship. My name is Mark Nell. I'll be bringing you some commentary here. If you're kind of new to this stream, yeah, Ryan here doing commentary as well. We do have the other championship game going on as well, where Team Ha from Korea will be taking on Team Delaney Strauss. 
right now they should be wrapping up the fourth man but as it stands the score is team ha is up four to one and on the other sheet we've got uh team samson taking on team brundage in the men's fifth place game So, see, fairly standard opening here. Uh, team dropping, go ahead and electing to come in the rings, and capping off center guard. Now, Team Casper, looking to generate their deuce, is set up their corner guard. And now, on their second rock, we'll look to set up a corner on the other side. So, good topic of debate. I know I've talked about it a few times on some of the broadcasts on teams' preferences on whether to stack corners on the same side or kind of separate them and team casper looking to separate them at least for this end i'm not sure what their team preferences are i'm not as familiar with this team strategies looks like they're just curling a bit early out of hand but now they're kind of switching it to kind of get that little push there get it and Good corner guards here. And doesn't look like Corey's going to like to cut off the draw path to the corners. Although the one on the, the right hand side of your screen is a little bit cut off by that. That's, you know, off center, center guard. So probably just looking to come on in here. Sweepers don't seem to be overly concerned with this. Going a little bit late here to tuck it, and we're going full 12, maybe just by the 8 foot, right? Well placed. Well placed shot by Team Dropkin. Now it's going to kind of force Team Capture to make a play on the rock that was just thrown. I think that we're looking to just kind of chip it and roll underneath the corner here. See if they can accomplish two things with this one rock here. Going hard for line here. Now switching over to the knifing to get a curl back to the line. We'll make ends up making contact with the top center and then rolling, and it will spill out of the rings. Who has really close? They were back and forth on the line call there, and then yeah, just caught away at the last second. Maybe. Yeah, it did, you know, and, I, and I'm noticing that's just a little bit more. Some of these stones are, or maybe they're just curling more than they expected to, where most of the events, you know, you, they weren't getting as much curl as expected. So maybe just, just something a little bit different to be mindful of in this, in this uh, final game. So Mark Fenner looking to basically just kind of put it back. And that's well placed, yep. Got a little bit more on the high side here, but with that other guard, yeah, they're really protecting both sides. So now it's going to start peeling these. I don't know if they can, if the plans to run into the ring or just double peel here. Yeah, I guess they're going to go ahead and take this on here. See if they can get all three somehow. Yeah, get it into the rings. Just gets the top one. Mm. It's getting really crowded on that outturn side now. Yeah.
after this card. I think they throw another appeal, Mark? Uh, we'll see where the placement is. I'm, I'm curious if Dropkin's going to try to put it a little bit more on the left-hand side. Yeah, splitting center line. Yeah. And see if and, and see if there's like a if there's a hole that's going to be left here. Going a little bit late on the sweep here to try and push it towards the center line, and looks like it is just going to yep straddle center. So, oof, this is. I mean, I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a couple options. You're running the center here. I mean, there's also that yellow red combination on the right hand side of your screen, although. Actually, I might. I don't know if I like that more. Either way, they're getting desperate to uh, try to get that top twelve rock moved. Really gotta make contact with the ones in the house here. Yeah. Oh, just oh. misses again. And leaves the guard up, unfortunately. Yeah, and I and I think that's why Kyle's. I I kind of like that kind of yellow red combination there because even if you make contact at least it maybe opens up that line you know uh but ugh. this is a tough position here yeah i think after this guard they're gonna have to draw into the house yeah try to put one like half buried Frozen on that back red one. Possibly play on it later, or maybe have that angle run on the left side. Yeah. And I think Team Dropkin realizes this and thinks maybe we don't have to throw another guard. Maybe yet. Yeah, they're thinking maybe we can plug the draw instead. Yeah, I mean, because whatever they peel out, you can essentially put it back here. But if you take away their draw now, right? Like that's. If you're Casper, you're you're either ripping or you're you're drawing, right? And you may have to draw on now because Corey may not give you that chance later. So maybe Corey's thinking, okay, well, I guard here. I can always put back a guard. Uh, you know, yeah, they're the they're betting on Team Casper missing that center line run back. It is a very long run back now, and yeah, yeah. So I think they're are they trying to plug the hole? Is that, is that the call? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere on that line. So I think they're looking for just a three guard. I, I, I don't think they would mind it if it's in, but I mean, I think ideally separation, so nothing you can run and, you know, get something on the way by here. I'm oh, trying to take it off the side there. And they get Ooh, it. Yep, they got it. That's nice. It makes the angled run just a little bit wider, too. Yeah. But. Don't think there's any other option but to try to run straight back on this one. Yep. Got to make something here. Yeah. Oh, he's running the red one, in, is he? I think so. I mean, I, I guess the maybe the angles. It, it opens it up, and you know, if you if you get close, you're gonna get one of those reds in the rings. Mm -hmm. That's true. With this one. They could catch either of the ones in the rings. Catch the one too thin. Ooh. Ooh. That's kind of a break. Yeah. I mean, that worked out all right. Yeah. Yeah. Falcon's going to have to try to replace that one that spun off to the side. Another one on the button. Yeah. So now the intern side is much more open now. Got a bit of breathing room on that side, but still not fun for Team Casper. Does improve the situation, I will say that. Yep, they have a cup. It's all yellow guards now, and they're all usable. So. Yeah, they're all they all are pretty high still though, so it's yeah. not the easiest run not back. The easiest. Ever. How how would you score that shot? Ah, uh, probably. Uh, probably a two, I guess. I mean, they got a little bit lucky with their redirect, but a two out of four. Uh, I think to give it a four to four, you have to run it back onto the rock you wanted. Yeah, you have to make contact, yeah. But it's definitely at least a two, if not a three, because uh, 
it, it, it was a good plan B to uh, to take off the other the other guard as well. And then yeah. they just got lucky that it got redirected back into the pile. Yeah, absolutely. This one's just a, coming up. I thought it looks like a hair light, but sweepers are working it pretty good here. Uh, that's a good result. That's well swept, yeah. Well managed. Nice shot. So it looks like uh, Julie's chiming in the chat with some good info for us. So Team Casper is the U25 national team. Last year, their team Violet with uh, Luke and Chase in the house and won this event. Yeah, Danny Bean was a junior, won juniors, went to Junior Worlds. Team Violet won bronze in the most recent events. Yeah, I remember seeing – there's familiar names, and, I, and, I, and I've seen it being – I've seen Team Violet. I've seen uh, Team Casper. I've seen T Team Sinet. So I wasn't sure, you know, kind of what the order was and if there were siblings involved. So thanks for the clarification. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's a good effort. Julie's so asking who we are. Uh, my name is Ryan Parent. I curl out of the Calgary Curling Club in Calgary, Alberta. And with me is is uh mark no yeah yeah so i'm mark no i uh i curl out of the oklahoma city curling club uh down here in the states so all right so what's i mean i guess you're just you're 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 just freezing on top or you're tapping it here Yeah, like, they could play one more run back too if they wanted. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you're gonna have to run one of the corners though, right? Like the, the this this one here on the the right hand side. Oh, that angle. I think I'd run the center one into the one on the top twelve and try to make that double. Yeah. That would just open things wide open. Like red would still be sitting one and drawing a second one in, but you should be able to get your single at the very least if you can make that. Yeah. It is a high guard, so they might be able to get close to the nose on this one. If they can manage that and bump it back eight, it'd be a pretty good shot. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. It's like, you know, if you're making a play on that one, how far do you want to bump it, right? And, and Yeah, ideally you can bump it so that you're shot, but that might be difficult. Yeah. Yeah, then you gotta figure out if you wanna to try to get the inside of it, so very interesting decision here for, for Team Casper. But it looks like they're electing for some... Looks like... I mean, this has got to be eyes for a like, little quiet wait. Yeah. The sweep here to kind of knife it in there. Oh, oh wow! Did it touch the guard? No, it got <laughs> nice. by. It just papered it. That was a very wow. nice shot. Well played, yeah. Good line call to <laughs> to keep them carving Jeez. it when they got that close. Yeah, definitely. If I was there, I'd, there'd be a lot of panic in my voice there. <laughs> but, well, man, that was really good. Gets they, it through. They like nose. They killed that rock in, on the nose. So yeah, yeah nice shot. So just a pick here. Oh, looks like a little bit more ice. So I guess yeah, just a nice hack weight shot. Uh, nose or a small roll to the left is fine. I think if they roll it a little bit into the open, there shouldn't be a nose hit. Is that side eight one would out count it? Mark Fenner with the late sweep here to kind of knife it in there. Does make contact and 
strong sweep by Corey to get it out there. Yeah, so. Nice shot. Yep. Back to back, very nice shots made there. So just a draw for one, it looks like. Yep. As much as I hate to say it, I do not see an easy triple. <laughs> Yeah, run the center one. You just have to nose the center one. That's pretty nose easy. the center, yeah. You can even get low side, just a, just a, just a hair low side. Trying to get a blink. <laughs> yeah. Or just have the worst luck and just stuff it. Just cleaning by the sweepers. Should be pretty close here. I don't think line doesn't appear to be much of a problem. Sweepers backing off and then back on. I think they're in the... Gets the little tick and rolls, just to be sure. So, single point there for Team Casper. Coming, we'll have, I guess, the sixth end. That was the sixth end. Oh, that was the sixth end? Oh, okay, yeah. So seventh end here after the break. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. We're back at the Curve U.S. Open of Curling in Blaine, Minnesota. The men's final here. Uh, Dropking just had a nice end. Set up well right from the start, and uh, Casper's team just couldn't quite make a run back. So they, but they ended up uh, opening up enough to make a draw for one, and take their one and six. Yeah, I mean, for a second there, I thought they weren't even going to have a, a draw pass. But they were able to kind of peel their way to clear out that uh, intern side and made a nice draw there. To update you on the women's game, score is 5-1 for Ha. They're throwing in the sixth end now. That game is also available uh, on Curling Zone, so you can either find it on Facebook or YouTube. Or actually, if you can just go to curlingzone.com, you can see all the scores, and they'll be updated as 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 production allows. And there'll be a little YouTube button, so you can kind of click on that to to go directly to the game.
I'm going to go hard here for mine and weight. Ooh, come on, guys. Comes up just short. Now, what is this team drop going to do? This thing put it into the back of the house. And they're playing with the rule. That they can't tick. Oh, yeah. On the I was going to say, line. yeah, the tick would be perfect. Tick and roll to a corner would be perfect, but. Yeah, not allowed. Cannot. Uh, so he just draws around the center guard again. Yeah. Like, come right down to his first shot. Yeah. And then we may have a situation where, again, Team Caster is going to have to make a, make a run back. Mm hmm. Which they really don't want to be doing in this situation. They're uh, trying to steal, they want that center guarded. And, yeah. This does, does it... hang out a bit, so they could have to play on the rocks in the house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't quite get over. So now, not necessarily looking to kill these rocks here, right? Just looking to move them, and more important to keep the shooter around. Yeah, I just try to nose that top A rock, and maybe they kill the the back one. Yeah. If they don't, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Sweepers don't seem to be interested, but then now having to go to this to that knifing technique to get it over. Weight's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, nice backline weight. Moves the rocks around, got a good angle set up there. Yep. And team drop is just gonna go up and peel. Yep. Oh, interesting. So they killed both of their own rocks in the house. But they also killed one of the yellows. I think it, it doesn't look great, but I think that's actually not that bad for them. They'll just uh, throw another run back on their next shot and try to fight yeah. for the blank this end. You know, it's it's interesting you say that because to me, it just like that seems not like a great. I mean, it seems like. You know, not a great outcome for them, right? Definitely not the desired outcome, but now they throw a guard here. But I, I, I guess it speaks to how easy and how comfortable it is for a team of Team Dropkins caliber to, to kind of make these run backs, you know? Yeah, they just got them. They just changed up the game plan for this end. Now it's super clear they're just going to hit everything they can and try to get a blank out of it. Yeah. It's a reasonably easy double peel here. Right on cue, Corey. Very clearly indicates double peel here. And well executed again. Yep, no problem. I just got to make one more double at some point, and they got their blank. Really important that uh, Team Casper keeps these rocks as in line as possible. Yeah. Nice guard. Yeah, good amount of separation too. So, yeah, it's just going to be a straight peel on this one. Peel. Yeah, I mean, I guess which is you know fine. No problems there. Casper keeps making these guards. Uh, might have a decision for Team Dropkin. This is another time where maybe they would consider 
it better to give up a steal than to take one. Give up a steal and uh, have Hammer in the last end tied versus taking one and uh, being up two without. Yeah. If it comes to that, I'll be interested to see what they decide on playing. Yeah. And especially with the no tick, right? You know, like that that makes it a little bit different too, right? You know? Yeah. No tick makes it easier to steal, but at the same time, you know, some uh, people like having that last rock. Yeah. And five rock rule makes it easier to take three. So, sure. And then also, I guess you also have the consideration too, like who makes the, who makes the call there, right? Is that, you know, is it, you know, Dropkin making that call or is, it, or is that Andrew, you know, call uh, based on him throwing last rocks, you know? I think in that situation, it'd, it'd be uh, Corey's, yeah. Corey's choice because it's not really about what the shot is. Like, presumably either way, the shot's going to be pretty easy. Um, it's more about how you want to play the scoreboard. Yeah. But I mean, as in every shot, it's going to be a team decision. For sure. For sure. Yeah. As we mentioned that, I can see Team Casper looking back at the scoreboard, trying to kind of do the math here really quick as they're seeing how this end's going to shake up and see what kind of decision they want to put to Team Dropkin here. And Team Dropkin opts to play for the one in the, s in the house and. They don't quite don't get it out. Get it out here. And they roll out. So now it's going to be looking much better for a force. Yeah. It's going to be a free draw behind the center guard. Yeah, I think with the no tick rule, I'd probably prefer to just take one and go up two. Yeah. With without the no tick rule, though, uh, I think I'd prefer giving up a steal, especially if my lead's hot and I know they're gonna make their ticks. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's always a deflating feeling is knowing, it, but it's kind of an interesting weapon for a team to have, right? Like if you go against a team that you know they're gonna make their ticks, you know. It changes strategy for sure. Absolutely, yeah. This draw is looking nice. Seems like both teams have their draw weight down pat, eh? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, both teams are, are pretty locked in here. and <clears throat> Yeah. I mean, 5-0 and oh through pool play you know I, I know i've said that a couple times i'm sure but yeah they, they seem pretty locked in i've got the ice kind of figured out you know and I've, some of the other games i've seen you know i think the ice has kind of surprised them you know in some games i've seen teams come up short a few times and other teams go you know back house but yeah these teams are pretty dialed in at this point A uh, quick update on the one of the other games here. So Team Hot did steal one in the fifth, so they are now up five to one over Team Strauss in the sixth end in the women's uh, Curve US Open of Curling Championship game. Yeah, I just slipped over to the other uh, to the women's game, and Team Hot has had a really unlucky shot. They like ticked. Both of the re the other team's stones and jammed them. Oh. So now Strauss is looking. They might have a. They kind of. Two or three, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nice uh, thing to be able to have here. So so here I am at home in Oklahoma. I'm able to watch some international curling, and I get the chance to talk about it. And I've I've got this two monitor set up so I can actually watch our game that we're commentating on the women's game. I kind of flip back to the YouTube chat. So it's, it's a pretty nice setup here that curling zones kind of put together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I remember years ago, I didn't have this, you know, so like very, very cool to be able to see this. We have a lot of curling in today between these two games of commentary and then 
first week of league here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it used to be, at least up in Canada. The only way you're going to watch curling games was on either Sportsnet or TSN or going in person. So, yeah. That was curling stadium. So much more coverage. Yeah. And a lot of teams are doing their own streams. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I get Team Rockin has theirs. So, right. Like, I think it's just, um, you know, finding them. So, on, I'm sure they've got, I'm sure they're all over the socials being a young team. So, so there's going to be a draw to the four foot to go one. Yep. Like I said, as long as they count two of them, even if they give up steel, they'll be pretty happy with this shot. Yep. But it is a draw against three. All right. Sweepers don't seem to be too worried about this. I imagine this is very close here. Just carefully managing it down the sheet here. Yep. Nice and shot. Back four, 14 left. Yep, really nice. So Team Dropkin gets their single, taking a two-point lead coming into the final end. Team Casper is going to be looking to get a deuce here, so. We'll be back with this last stand here uh, after the break. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. We're back in the final end of this championship game, the Curve US Open of Curling. Team Dropkin versus Team Casper. And Team Casper is down two without Hammer, or with Hammer. Yeah. And as we saw in the semifinal game, with the lead going in, Team Dropkin electing to go ahead and put one in the rings instead of throwing through. Yeah, in the uh, semifinal, they were up three, I believe, in the last end. Yep. Yeah, so this is two points. So I was saying in the last game, I like just putting the rock through the house when you're up three. I think sure. up two is a little bit different. And uh, putting two rocks in the house, I'd, I'd, I'd lean more towards doing that. But we might see a corner guard tick here. Let's see what yep. I decide to do. This is another draw. A little bit of separation here. A uh, quick update for our uh, women's final game. Looks like uh, Team Strauss uh, clawing back, getting a big three there in the sixth end. So now um, Team Hall having a five to four lead as they play the seventh end for that game.
nice shot there. And I'll be interested to see after Casper throws up another corner guard if they're going to throw a guard on those two in the centers. Yeah. A tight guard. That's probably what I would call it. Yeah, I think so. I think if you just leave them open, it, it makes it too easy for the other team to use those rocks to move them back behind the T-line. Yeah. yeah so throw a on. tight guard, and you have really good control over the center. Oh, yeah. Uh, I agree, yeah. And, and I and I think there's also something to be said, but if you throw a guard, it, it you know, the, it kind of puts it in the other team's mind that they're going to have to make a play, going to have to make a run. Oh, they're going to have to sweep to get this over. Come on, boys. Ooh. Do you get it over? That's so scary. Oh, from this view, it looks like they cleared it by tons, but I was nervous for them. So Ryan, what kind of, what kind of depth do you like here for this guard? I think you want to be maybe about five feet out of the house. If you're uh, too close to the house, um, it makes it pretty easy for Team Casper to roll in and hit the hit the guard and roll in under one of their centers. Yeah. Um, too high and it's too easy for Team Casper to access the ones in the middle. So I think about five feet out of the house, roughly, for the broom length out of the house is yeah. ideal. This one's a bit tight, but yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty they're not going to be able to yeah. roll into the house on that. I mean, it is possible, but yeah, you know, that's, just, that's a hard roll yeah to make here. So, so it looks like they're indicating just kind of corner frozen, or you know, or just kind of locking one on top here on the uh, outturn side. Yep. Yeah, they'll throw a corner freeze up and try to, if they get the opportunity, they'll hit and roll off of the, their own rock and roll their shooter behind uh, one of the corners. Well, this is hanging out, though. The guard, yeah. Oof. <laughs> it kind of covers up that run back a little bit, does it? Yeah. Uh, it's close to edge on edge, but oof. So now Corey's just gonna guard here again. This... Yeah, it's gonna be tricky now. They're, just, they're gonna have to start throwing some peels. Yeah. But if they make if they make some good runbacks, they got lots of rocks and plates. Yeah, there's there's still plenty of. I mean, it's it's getting scary, but there's there's plenty of time here for for them to make one or two good runbacks. So that's the difference between uh, being up two and being up three. Being up two, I think you can certainly play like this as Drock and play aggressive, and you know the other team's going to have to chase you. Yeah. Up three, you don't have to do all this because you just got to make all your shots and you'll be good. Sure. But up two, even if you make all your shots perfectly, if the other team does that as well, they'll they'll be able to get a deuce. So playing this a little one... bit more aggressive like this is, is smart, yeah. I think. This one seemed a little bit wide too, so I wonder if there's just a spot out there because I gotta think they wanted that a little bit tighter and and higher. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they meant to come into the house on this one. So I mean, it's 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 still in a tricky spot because can you can roll, but I don't know if you can really roll. Can you roll on there with this angle? I'm not great with angles here, Ryan. Sorry, can you do what? So if, if they're hitting this top uh, red one here, are they able to kind of roll this on here? Into the house? Yeah. Yeah, they'll be able to roll into the house. So. OK. They'll, yeah, uh, as long as they don't throw an absolute bomb, they'll be yeah. able to roll under the corner, and they'll, they'll be touching the top of the 12 foot. I'm going to push this one in, too. So maybe it's running just a little bit straight at least that. Yep. And does barely roll in. Yep. Under the yeah. corner. Pretty nice, yeah. Really good shot, and uh, there's a red double available too now. Yep. There's a red double. There's that slash off that other yellow. We'll have some interesting shots ahead of us here. and Pretty exciting uh, eighth end here, I think.
what's he calling here? Is he just trying to draw another one behind the center? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess you're you're kind of underneath that center one. So in case I want to try to run some of that back and just kind of protect, you know, protecting the inside half of the the one that's like kind of top eight ish. Hmm. So he jumbles his own rocks around a bit. Yeah. There's going to be a double. Uh, I'm going to be able to roll under the center, but I don't know if that's that good because it might be tough to get rid of that back four yeah. rock. Yeah. So actually, yeah, that's kind of a. I think they're just going to play it anyways and uh, figure out later how they're going to get rid of that red one. Figure out how to clean it up, yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll always have stuff that they can kind of run in here. Yeah, just... there'll be something. Yeah. Well, this side has been curling quite a, or running straight a little bit. They were on it early for line, back on it for line now. Back on the curl, so you got to be pretty close here. Yep. And nice shot. Makes a double, yep. And tucks a piece underneath that center. Yeah, I think that's the perfect roll. They don't want to roll too much more, otherwise you're yeah. kind of covering the red one. Yep. So this looks... Yeah, and Corey starting can't... to turn around now. Yeah, Corey can't really go after that one, because it's buried enough, and even if you, you get a piece of it, you're just jamming on that back wedge. Yeah, it's kind of saving him a little bit right now. They either got to draw another rock in, but I don't know where you would put a draw. I was also thinking they could play a run back on the corner and try to kill that one on the edge of 12 foot. Yeah, I'm not sure. A... I think initially he was thinking going back four, but now he's. I appreciate the, the broad sweeping gestures by Corey to. Give me an idea of what he's looking at here. I think yeah, I'm thinking a run back. Yeah. He's going to be able to roll his shooter into the center, maybe give his shot rock a little bit more protection. Yeah, I would have never seen this shot, but man, that kind of speaks to how experienced and how knowledgeable Corey is. Yeah. I think I saw on Curling Zone that were there like 17th? The ranked uh, team in the world? Uh, 19th. 19th, oh, okay. And they're currently the top... Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, oh that, that's pretty that's good. Little, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, well, I'm like, oh, are they going to take their own rock out? But uh, kind of um, works out. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Corey Droppin's team is ranked 19th in the world. Oh, okay. And they're the highest ranked American team at the moment. Nice. Yeah, I've probably yeah, I probably need to go double check on curling zone to see where everyone's ranked and just kind of see where all the US teams and how they kind of stack up. Even though it's I guess relatively early, but always kind of fun to kind of see that stuff. But then yeah, I guess I can also take a look and see at some of these international teams. Like I'm not familiar with Team High. I couldn't tell you, you know, what they are ranked in the world, but you know, for them to kind of make this final they Imagine they'll, I imagine they're maybe already up there and they'll be up a little bit more after this finish. Yeah, Team Ha is ranked 44th right now. Oh, okay. So we'll see what kind of jump they get or how, I don't know, how that affects. Yeah, rankings. making a final here will definitely uh, bump them up a few spots at least. Yeah. If so they get the win. Bump them up maybe up to 10 spots or so. Yeah. Not sure how close the points are around that sort of area of women's. Yeah. So we, what are we looking at here for going top four?
let's see. So they they gotta start getting it. Yeah, I think they want to try to get this one to be shot. Yeah. We're running out of time here, so having to go hard at the end, just get it buried and maybe to the forefront. I don't think they're shot though. Not quite shot. Yeah. This, this might be usable. It might might have a shot for you'd be able to tap that one back into the red one. Yeah. In the future. Yeah, nice to have this overhead cam to kind of see, you know, like see where the rocks are lined up, see what kind of angles the teams are working with here. Yeah, don't always get that. So definitely appreciate the, the production quality we get to see here. So, um, no idea what they should be playing here. Yeah, I mean, if if you're Casper, right? Like your your shot is either like ticking the one you just threw, or running in that long, long, or running one of that that long corner on the uh, intern side, which is you're fine if they take that, right? So I think you got to guard this little tap, right? They could uh, hit that other one in the house too. Yeah, it, it, that one is in the house, is it? Maybe it's not in the house. I think it. I, I think it is. Maybe, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, but he, I mean, no. There's a little bit of well, you know, there's you can see a little bit of white there. So yeah, it's hard to tell from this angle though. Yeah, but I, I would have thought with. Since they put the run back on their last one, that it might have been in the house. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's all, kind of what I was thinking too. But now that they're not hitting it, it makes me think maybe it's not in the house. But if they play that run back, then they, if they went on top of the other one, right? Then maybe they're just out. I don't know. So we'll see. First of skips rocks here, or fourth rock. I think it's they decided on this kind of guard, medium depth, just a uh, yeah. Or, uh. So it does take away kind of that tap we were talking about. Yeah, the first thing they looked at there was that long angle run back. Yeah. Do you have to do that on your first one though? Do you just not like can you can I, you get can you get a double peel here off the the two ones that are closest to the center line? You could do a double peel, but then Oh then, then Corey just picks out that. that. Yeah. Like they gotta keep their top four rocks safe, especially if that other one's not in the house. Yeah, if it's not in the house, right. But if it is in the house, then essentially they would have some sort of maybe double for the win. Yeah. Team or double to the tie, yeah. Yeah, careful, but not leaving a double. Yeah. They have uh, this red run, which yeah. is a little bit dangerous, but if they can get it, that'd be very nice. Yeah. They just have to hit it onto like a thin bit of that yellow one. Yellow one goes into the back red. Yeah. You lose both reds. I guess if they catch it thin and get the other red on the center line, that's not terrible. Again, a lot of this is kind of matters if the, if that one on the uh 10 o'clock position from the overhead view is, is biting or not mm -hmm. and the other thing i'm looking at now is they could run that yellow one that's just off the center line yeah. try to run it straight back just miss the uh center line one and just uh, pick out the back red That'd yeah be very tough but it, it would even if you miss it you roll you hit it on the inside sure you still open up that red rock Can you hit this center red and spill in on the the right hand side? Does yeah, that... you could throw like hack weight and just hit it really thin and try to roll in. Does that give you anything? Yep. Might be okay, but the yellow would be open. Yellow's open, but then it leaves you 
two options for the run back on the intern side then. Yeah. Lots to think about here. <laughs> Anyone in the chat have opinions on what they should do here? Yeah, we looked at run backs for all four of those, <laughs> those guards. <laughs> Well, if anyone splitting the center one, but the other three could all be run back, maybe. Yeah. Or it, do you guys think that corner is on the ten o'clock position there? Do you guys think it, that's in? We we saw a closer up view, and I, I still couldn't tell. It looked just out, but then I look at this overhead cam and it looks in. You know. I'm gonna guess that it's out. I, I thought yeah. it was in initially when they first played that shot, but the more I'm looking at it, I think it might not be. All right, so they end up settling on this one here. OK. What kind of weight are we looking here for this type of shot? I mean, it looks pretty tight ice, right? So it's got to be a little up. I mean, I guess it's pretty far up there, so we'll see. Yeah, rock that high. The guard that high. It's not going to curl much by the time it gets to it. I'd probably throw about a nine second here. It's really important that you keep, you stick around the rock yeah. running back if possible. So you don't want to throw it too hard. And, well, that takes that one out of play now. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that anymore. That's actually, so that takes that, because I don't think they have that angle anymore on the, on the uh, uh, out turn side to run that one in, so. Yeah, they, they can go uh, in off, off that yellow one on the right hand side, right hand side from the hack perspective. Yeah. And about a quarter of that into their own yellow and get two that way. Oof. Or they'll have that super long angle run, but I think this tight guard that Dropin's going to put up here is going to block that off anyways. So yeah, yeah, this will be kind of an interesting guard that Team Dropkin's going to have to throw here because you ideally want to protect like right that that's that simple quiet weight hit, but then also kind of block this uh, this angle, angle run. run. I think the uh, in offs a bit easier though, anyways. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, just make sure you're guarding your shot and looking pretty good. A stone by Andrew Sopera. And this looks kind like of curled. Yeah, it should one. be pretty nice. Yeah. Nice shot. I think they're going to play the end off. Yeah. He's looking at the other one here. You're 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 playing the end off. If this is up to you, right? All day long, right? I think the end off is easier. Yeah. God, that's so far for the single raise, but like the, I don't know. He keeps on going back to it. I'm almost with him on this angle here. I think it's like, I mean, both are extremely tough here because you have to catch the, the ins, you have to catch the yellow on the top four at another angle too, right? Yeah. And have the right weight to so you don't lose the, the throne rock. Yeah, this other one is just so long and so far away. You have to be incredibly precise with where you hit it. Yeah. Looks like they're calling that, though. I mean, I guess they just threw this line, so... Well, we'll kind of have an idea of what it does here. Final stone by Daniel Casper. Very tough shot to try to get into an extra end here against Team Dropkin.
Going hard for line here. It's close. Yeah. It's really close. It's oh, really wow. Close. Holy what a shot. crap. That was an amazing shot. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So yeah. we're going to get to see an extra end now. Oh, my gosh. Broom in the air. He knew it when he, ma he made contact. Wow, that was crazy. We'll see you in, uh, in the extra. That was an amazing shot. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. We are back for the extra end. They pushed the rocks down, and so they'll be playing to the home end again. And we have a final in the women's game. Team Ha scored seven, or scored four in the seventh end, and uh, went on to win. So congratulations to Sung Yeon Ha and her team from Korea. And uh, good job to Delaney Strauss' team as well for placing second place. Yeah, Strauss went undefeated through round robin and um, just faced a tough team, hot team in the finals. But great showings by both teams. But getting back to our game, wow, what a shot! I still can't get over that. Uh, yeah, that was that was incredibly hard. You have to hit that top rock within within like half a centimeter or so, maybe even more precise than that. Yeah, and just that shot right. You know, throw the weight so you're going to keep it around. Like, it's just, it's easier to want to overthrow that, right? You know, just to take the curl out of it. Man, what a shot. What happened there? They tried to, oh, I guess the center but, guard didn't quite get to the center line, so they attempted yeah, to take. I think but, I just ended up out there, yeah. But just, so. just hit it out so that rock would be replaced. Yeah, so. Casper uh, got a chance to throw uh, center again here and have a couple guards in play which will be good for the for the all out you know steel chance but man what a shot again still crazy shot and i'm glad we here have broadcasting for that so we can see that and just imagine how many shots that like that are made like that in curling clubs all around the world that we don't get to see and don't have you know archives of it right but man exactly that reminds me in when we played in Okotoks two weeks ago, or sorry, last week, I guess. Uh, this weekend just feels like it's taken forever. <laughs> um, we played Kevin Cooey in our first game, and oh, yeah. I made like probably one of the best shots of my life in the seventh end to score three. Yeah, uh, We went on to lose, but uh, yeah. once I came in, I asked my mom immediately or anyone who was around, like, did anyone record that? Nobody had. I'm like, oh, oh that's <laughs> tough. Yeah, should have been playing in Leduc, and we'd have have it recorded. Yeah, we'd have it forever. It'd be on YouTube forever, and be on Twitter. You know, a few minutes later, just this little clip, and then you know. But man, what a shot! But getting back to this extra end here, so didn't I, I didn't see where that guard ended up, but I, I think it was just just off center. 
Yeah, so Dropkin's gonna. Oh, another tick shot. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get either of those. To center, but locks in the center. So I was talking about how I'm not sure I like the tick roll too much because it takes a little bit of skill out of the lead's hands when they sure. get to play tick shots because that's such a, like a huge aspect of being a lead is making those tick shots. Sure. But on the other hand, it does add more skill into the lead shots to really make sure that they get those center guards on the center line. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be an interesting question that Curling's going to have to kind of figure out um, how to deal with, or how to, I, I, I guess the want is to not have too long of an extended time, but try to add excitement, right? You know, you never essentially want the game to be over in an extra end after Leeds rocks, or you don't want to punish the leading team or, you know, take away from the skill of the, the leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about fun here. A good balance to make the game exciting yet fair yeah so i mean we're seeing the you know just the the just the draw to the button challenge which is you know tough but you know some people like that yeah personally i'm not a huge fan of just drawing uh to determine the winner because it's just it's just like it's just one shot right and yeah. Anything could go wrong with one shot. You could get a pick, or you know, you just slightly miscalculated. Maybe the sweeper sweep it an inch heavy, and it's just behind the pin, and the other team hits the pin, and like, should you really deserve to lose because of that? Or should, yeah. versus throwing a full full end where each player gets to throw rocks, and <laughs> got to make eight shots, not just one shot. Trying to Another thing here. Yeah. And... Another thing they could consider doing, I was thinking of this now, is rather than having the no tick rule, they could have it so that whoever would have hammer in the extra end, they get to choose to either be up one or down up one without hammer or down one with hammer. Because those are generally the most complicated last ends when it's yeah, when you're down one with. So maybe they maybe that's a possibility in the future i don't know if there's been any talk about that but just uh, something that popped into my head yep let's see if there's a is this run back straight peel try to get the peel uh the run back run back just missed. so we'll see a few guards and a few run back attempts here What does everyone think about in the chat about doing the extra end where one team is up one without? And the team that would have had hammer gets to choose what they want. Any any opinions on that? You know, one thing I was thinking about, and I wasn't sure how the format would be, but uh, I guess Kind of similar to like a penalty kicks or a shootout of some sort, right? Where you just have to, but then what's the qualifier? Like, do you just have to draw full four, draw and touch a piece of the button and keep on doing that? But the skill level, I mean, easily this can go on a really, really long time, you know? Yeah, I remember, I think one game. I was watching Kevin Kui play. I think it might have been at the Connell Cup in Calgary or something like that. And they made, I think they made four for the pregame draw to the button. They made four pins in a row. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you have to keep throwing a pin, throwing the draw until you get a measurable rock, and they just kept pinning, pinning it over and over again. Yeah. And now, uh, now a lot of events are doing a thing where they triangulate the rock. So yep. even if it covers the pin, they can still get a measurement on it. And uh, yeah, there's guards and peels this end so far. Both teams are making their shots. Yep. Yep, just keeping it clean here. <clears throat> and then 
Well, man, I was just trying to push it a little bit closer to the center line cover a little bit. Four curls, just a touch, but still pretty good. Yeah, that's a nice shot. It's tougher than you might think to keep putting uh, guards in over and over again, getting that line just right. Oh, yeah. Another peel made, and now we're at Skips Rocks. Daniel Gasper's going to throw up another guard, I believe. Going hard for the line there, and this one doesn't curl quite as much, but covers a good chunk of it. So, yeah, there's an option now to try to hit the one out in the house, <clears throat> or since there's a little bit more of an angle, you could try to make the double and just roll your shooter off just a little bit. Yeah, further away. I think that's what they're gonna try. Like yep. I had a quick discussion. I think they were initially thinking, we'll go ahead and draw in the rings, but this is probably the right call. Again, thank you for everyone who's joined us this morning to watch the uh, the final of the Curve US Open of Curling. Always good to see curling available online, streaming platforms, and, and you got a chance, if you were watching earlier, you got a chance to watch a wonderful shot in the eighth end to send us to extras. Yeah, for anyone joining us from uh, the women's final game, you should rewind back to the end of the eighth end and check that out. Just crazy shot to force an extra is absolutely bonkers shot that Oof. so they make the straight peel and now team casper's got to figure out what's the best way to improve our chances of getting a steal yeah. here i mean are you yeah i think you're gonna have to draw line or to the left hand side yeah I kind of like that would be really good it'd be hard to do and not leave a simple double but if you could be like draw right beside your own rocks you're like frozen to the side of it uh, it's really hard good. to make a double a crotch double like that so, yeah and uh, it blocks off a lot of the drawing area yeah but that's that's so hard and if you just over curl a couple inches it makes the double way easier or if you're just slightly corner frozen, then it's a super easy double as well. Yeah. So it might be some sort of tap. That's, tap what, I was, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, like a nose tap and push it to, you know, like... To the back of the T-line. Back T-line, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the most separation. standard shot here. Is just tap it back. And then uh, Team Dropkin's either going to have to draw to the button or make a double. Yeah, I think I like this tap, right? Because if you're if you're light, you're, you're you're leaving as a guard, right? And unless you're like just way heavy, right? Like it's it's gonna be, I think a pretty useful shot here. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty good if, as long as you're somewhat close. Yeah, somewhat close. Yeah, probably line more important than anything here. This one looks a little up here, but no, it's slide down quite a bit here. 
just managing line now at this point. Does get the tap and moves it up to top of the yeah. button. Oof. And it looks like should be a pretty routine double, yeah. Andrew wants to play the double. Yeah. Will we see a double? Will we see a just a peel and spill out for maximum carnage? <laughs> <laughs> A good old uh, blank, blanked uh, ninth then. I'm guessing they're going to keep the weight a little bit more controlled here. Probably won't throw more than eight seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Corey doing a good job showing visually where we're hitting here. So uh, sweepers can be on, on board here. I like that, actually. You don't see too many people doing that. You know, yeah. Doing like that. And how he flips his broom around so it's really easy to see. Yeah. Last shot here by Andrew Stapera for the win. Yep. Kind of dropping off. And makes it. Well and made. Sits around. Sticks around. Good game, guys. Well played. Yeah, really good game. That was fun to watch. Uh, so Team Dropkin will take the win. Six and zero for the weekend. Great curling. I saw, I think, three of their games this weekend, and every single one they were yeah. on point. Definitely deserve to win this event. Yep. Will be interesting to see on Curling Zone how far they move up in the world rankings. And if you didn't hear already, the women's final also completed with uh, Sung Yeon Ha from Korea taking the win. Uh, well, thanks for joining us, everybody, for for the Curve US Open of Curling this weekend. Uh, we had lots of fun uh, producing and uh, commentating. Thanks for uh, being here, Mark. Uh, any final yeah, words? Yeah, thanks for having me. No, um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks to Curling Zone for putting out these broadcasts. Got a chance to watch a lot of curling. Wonderful shot making. Um, thanks for people in the chat participating. I uh, love the interaction there. And uh, I guess hopefully we'll see some of you guys back here uh, in a couple weeks for the next Curling Zone broadcast. Or, or, or is there anything sooner than that? Or is it? Or are we two weeks? Uh, Leduc, uh, men's and women's in Leduc next weekend, as well as Vernon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you guys are wanting to watch more curling, um, you know, make sure to follow curling zone on the socials you can subscribe to them on youtube probably the easiest thing to see their next broadcasts and uh we'll, we'll hopefully see you guys then